40. So my 10th best player on the San Francisco 49ers is Jaquaski Tart. Now he's a guy that I feel like has not really gotten credit. And remember, how good this is this is injuries, injuries in, aside. Yeah, it's what he's done on the field, and I don't yeah. think he's gotten credit for how good a player he has been with his time with the 49ers. And something I talked about, right, is what can you do? Can you tell me what Jaquaski Tart can't do? When he first came with Eric Mangini, he was their dime linebacker, linebacker he hell of a blitzer. Then he became their box safety. He was outstanding. More than just a hell of a blitzer. More than just a hell of a blitzer. He was terrific in coverage. And that's why they right. And he, yeah. He's outstanding against the run. Then mm -hmm. Eric Reed, Jimmy Ward gets hurt in camp. And first game, they have him play single high, single high free safety. He has the range and the ability to do that. You he's can a better put him, player than Eric Reed ever was. Absolutely. Ever. And so he there's no weakness to his game. He can play quarters. He can play half. Well, there's one play, weakness to his game, but we're not we're not going there in this list. He can play single high. He can he can he's very good against the run. He's shown he can blitz. He's mm -hmm. extremely good in man. He can play in zone and very smart, very versatile. When you go through all of these things, right? And now he doesn't play. talk about his smartness. Because I think what people don't understand is that Robert Sala the past few years have, has put a ton on his plate. Yeah, of course. He's a very smart football player, and they do a lot of small checks. I mean, one of the things that was unique to this defense, and this is one of the only defenses in the NFL that can do it, is based on the tight end's motion, when they played single high, they rotated their two safeties. Mm -hmm. How many other defenses can do that? And, you know, there are other guys who are very good at one specific thing. And like they Jamal Adams can't do that. Right. He gets highlighted because right. they let him do one specific thing. In Tart's case, I feel like something that's held him back is that when you're so good at everything, the defense, it's like, okay, well, this guy can't do this, but Tart can cover and he can do that. So let's make Tart do that and let Dre Greenlaw take the linebacker and come down and hit him. And so right. those and little so what you're things, saying I think is, what you're saying is like by making Tart's job complicated and uh, vast, you make Greenlaw's job simple. And right. so and Greenlaw just, stars – while Jaquas right. Tart is making eight checks during a play. Right. I mean, it's not right. eight checks, but the idea is that he 8, does. 8,000 checks. <laughs> sure. No, but the idea is that Tart's role within this defense, it's so fluid because of all the different things he can do. I think he's a very, very good player. I think it gets underrated how good he is. I mean, if you want to go down the number of safeties in the NFL, like there's some safeties that are good in the box, but they don't have the range to play single high. Jamal Adams is one of those. There's some safeties that are very good playing single high, like a Jesse Bates, but you can't put them down in the box and ask them to blitz and do all those things. He does every single one of those things. When he plays, he has a very big impact on the Niners. I mean, you can see it. The games he missed last year, they struggled. And I don't think Marcel Harris played particularly bad. I just think that Jaquaski Tart is that good of a player. So, yes, he's the 10th best player for me on the 49ers. You made a great case for Tart. I don't even have Tart in my top 10. And I guess he should have been an honorary mention. I mean, he's done more in his career than Jeff Wilson Jr., uh, certainly. I look at the Niners kind of in two different classes, and it's hard for me to rank the players together. There's these young guys who have – really flashed, but a lot of guys who have basically had one year, one good year, and other established vets. So Tart is an established vet that I left off the list uh, and ranked behind some young guys. So maybe that's not fair. And in a couple of years, I'll look back and be like, eh, I jumped the gun on this kid. I didn't give Tart the benefit of the doubt. That's why I left him off. My number 10 guy is Debo Samuel. And you might be like, oh, wow, he would be way higher on my list. I love Debo Samuel. I just I put some other people ahead of him and I'll get to them later. The reason what I love about Debo Samuel is that um, <laughs> he's basically a running back who can play wide receiver at a very high level. I mean, he's a, he's a phenomenal route runner for a running back. He's a phenomenal receiver for a running back. And the, I mean, he's the most unique wide receiver I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen anyone like that. Percy Harvin was like that, but this guy's got like 30 pounds on him. And no one wants to. He's a better him. receiver than Percy Harvin. Yeah, he's just really, really good. Now, is he, if he couldn't do the stuff after the catch and he was just a receiver, would he be great? No, but that's the, he's the whole package. If he would be allowed to play special teams as well, uh, he'd be higher on the list. And if he can back up what he did in 2019, again in 2021, I would vault him up the list just based on the fact that he did it twice. But my theme going forward is. I'm going to be downgrading the young guys because I would, I need to see him prove it. I was around covering this team when Ron Jaworski said that Colin Kaepernick was the most talented quarterback of all time after about nine games. So you don't want to be a prisoner of the moment. Um, I'm putting Debo Samuel at 10. I hope that's not a slap Fair. in anyone's face.
Fair enough. Like, you know, I got yeah. I got Debo higher on my course. list. You know, you know how much I love Debo Samuel, so he's going to be higher. One more thing I did want to mention with Tart, I missed it in my mm-hmm. opening statement. Just one more thing to drive this home is our guy, Jason Aponte, tweeted this out this morning. According to Pro Football Reference, in 15 games, Tarverius Moore has allowed 419 yards in coverage. Hmm. In 27 games, Chikwaski Tart has allowed 350 yards hmm. in coverage. How about so that? that that's a gigantic discrepancy. And I think part of it is everybody always wants to go, well, these safeties don't make plays. These safety don't these safeties don't make plays. Are they put in positions to make plays? When you look at That's Jimmy Ward, if he's playing man on the slot receiver and he's got him locked up, the ball is not going to come near Jimmy Ward. So one, A, he can't make the tackle. B, he can't play the ball. But and C, if he's covering the slot, Kwan Williams gets to be the blitzer in their little fire zone and all of that. And now K1 and Williams Fred Warner gets to, gets to play as uh, like right. the rat defender underneath. Right, right. That so kind of they, stuff. they they, they yeah. open up a lot of things for this defense because of their versatility. And I think that if Tart played in Pittsburgh with a very aggressive Blitzburg scheme, the way they let Terrell Edmonds and Mika Fitzpatrick fly around, his stats would be a lot better when he plays. Obviously, the quick, injuries is a question. You guys probably realize Tart's not on the 49ers. He's going to be a free agent. We are we are counting all soon to be free agents as still yes, Niners. Yeah. That's how we're true, doing it. True. And, and last thing, important. do you think um Best guess, you think Tart resigns with the Niners? Oh, we'll see. I, I, I think that he's got a really good shot at resigning. I think that they should want to resign him. But yeah. I also think that there is a need for safeties with a few teams like Dallas and stuff. And so they might offer him because he's comfortable with the scheme and he's a very complete football player. And again, if Dallas, any team in Texas offers a free agent a deal, a California team has a real tough time competing. That's just the way it is. Right. 